So the last section of the notes here really uses all of the stuff that we've been talking about to, and we'll go through a few examples of puzzles and problems um, that you use logic to solve. Both inductive and deductive reasoning is usually used um, in like together, it's, it's often hard to even pull it apart. Generally, inductive reasoning, um, so moving from something general or, or, uh, specific to something general, is used when we're recognizing patterns or creating order, like the height of the people, right? Where I forget their names, Joan and Patrick or whatever. Deductive reasoning we use when we kind of drill down, we start with our rule, we start with our conjecture, and we actually have to put a number in a box, right? Or come up with a, a specific answer to the puzzle that we're doing. So we're gonna start out with um, number puzzles. These might be something that you've done before. Um, I tried to pick different examples um, that, that would kind of work for different brains. And so maybe you are a Sudoku player, right? Maybe you've done these kinds of puzzles before. The first ones here are magic squares. So um, you might have done these in school or, you know, I don't know, in the newspaper or something like that. So basically you fill the boxes with numbers one through nine so that the sum of each column and row and diagonal adds up to 15. And so in these ones, the numbers can only be used once and we're supposed to complete them. So I'm going to do the first one here and then I'm going to flip back and forth between the ones that I've already done. Because if you had to listen to my logic the whole way through, it would probably be painful. So in this first one, I'm going to start with this box right here. So 7 and 5 is 12. I'm supposed to add these up to 15. So that's going to put a 3 in that box right there. Diagonally, I'd have a 2 and a 5. So 7 which puts an eight in that box. The next one, I would move across and do this one here. So eight and three is 11. So that puts a four there. Two and four is six. So to get to 15, I need a nine. And then moving across in this direction, if you're following, I'd have nine and four and five is 14 plus one would give me 15. And then I can do this last one any which way. I could also take a look and it would be the number that I haven't used so far. So that number would be a six. Let's test that conjecture. So two and seven is nine plus six is 15. And so that would be the answers um, for this first magic square. The next one's a little bit trickier. Honestly, I had to just start guessing um, and, and sort of rule out options because I don't have the same arrangement that I had before. And so um, I'm just going to write the answer in, give it some time on your own, see if you can get there through your own um, logic and reasoning. The next one on the page are, is a Sudoku puzzle. And I know my husband is, I don't know, he, he seems to do a lot of Sudoku puzzles. <laughs> um, after having knee surgery once, he actually even monitored how much pain medications or the effects of his pain medications by how long it took him to do a Sudoku. I think a great way to get into Sudoku puzzles is on your phone. Um, because on the phone, it's different than doing them on paper. On the phone, it gives you prompts and um, will highlight rows and boxes and, and kind of gives you some clues in it. If you've never done a Sudoku puzzle, what you're supposed to do is each of the squares, right? So each of these big nine by nine squares should have the numbers one through nine in them, as should every row or, or column or every row. And so if I start with this one, this row here, I should have the numbers one through nine. So one, two, three, I'm missing a four, so I know a four goes in that block. Um, the rules for these are pretty clear, right? So we've, we've got our inductive reasoning, so then you're gonna use deductive reasoning to fill in, right? Um, the strategies are to look to both the lines and to the boxes. The other thing you can do is make notes of what it could potentially be. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna flip to the answers for this one. Um, it has a few more notes down the side of it, right? Um, a little bit about using your phone because it does give you those prompts. The rules are clear, 
So you're not really using as much inductive reasoning. You're mostly using deductive reasoning in these kind of puzzles. Um, and the strategies are to look to the lines and also look to the boxes. The other thing you can do is kind of keep, um, you know, a tally of the numbers that you've worked through. Maybe you could work through all the ones in the puzzle and all the twos in the puzzle. Um, that's the way your phone will do it. It'll, it'll give you prompts that way. So give that one a try. If you're a whiz at Sudoku's, then, um, go ahead and do that one. If you're not so much, give it a try and then kind of take a look at the answers and see if you get it right or not. The next ones that we're going to do are more word problems. And so these might be logic tables. They might be riddles or brain teasers. Um, I love biology and in genetics or Punnett squares, that's a good example of logic puzzles. So I've got a few examples here. The first one is a bit of like a card trick. So it says 10 cards numbered 0 to 9 are divided into five envelopes. There are two cards in each envelope. Each envelope shows the total of the cards inside it. So the sum of those numbers, right? The envelopes are marked with a 5, a 7, a 2, oh, that's a 9, not a 2, sorry. Just all I had to do is copy the numbers. A 9, a 10, and a 14. So that's what's on the envelopes. I'm supposed to figure out the cards that are in these envelopes, right? Each envelope is going to have two in it. I'm going to write out the numbers 1, 2, 9. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And I've got a few more clues here. So the envelope marked with a 10 has a 6 in it. So if it has a six in it, then it also has the four in it because we have this rule that I have to add up to how the envelope is labeled. So we've got the six taken care of and we've got the four taken care of. The other clue here says that the envelope marked with a 14 contains the five card. So I'd have a five in there, but I'd also have the nine in that one. Okay, the other ones get a little bit trickier. I've gone through all of my um, clues or cues, right? I need to figure out how I could add two numbers together to get a five, a seven, and a nine with what I have left over here. So the way I did this is think about um, how I could get to the five, right? The only way I could get to the five with the numbers that remaining would be a two and a three. That's the only way I could get to five with the numbers that I have left over. So I'd cross those ones out. If I now take a look at this, the only way that I could get to a seven would be to add seven and zero. So those ones would be taken care of. And this should all work out where the last two numbers I have to account for should add up to be nine. So that kind of illustrates my line of reasoning right? I like drawing out pictures, sorting things on paper, kind of giving, um, you know, when I've, I've dealt with things, you can cross them out because it reduces your choices. Those are all good strategies in figuring these kinds of things out. The next one is a bit of a trick. So it's um, like the fallacious proof. It's, it's a trick in that it sounds logical, but there's something wrong. So Albert plays a trick on his four-year-old niece, and he says to her, his niece that he can prove that she has 11 fingers. So Nicole counts her fingers to Albert, and then he says, I think you made a mistake. Let's count backwards, starting with your little finger. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, plus 5 more makes 11. Where is that mistake? So he's saying the numbers counting backwards this way, right? And when he gets to the six, he adds five more. Well, he's only said five numbers. So as he counts backwards, he's only said five numbers. So five plus five, equals 10. Nicole does not have 11 fingers. He's trying to trick her. Okay, the last one I did, it's a classic example. Um, you'll notice that this link is on the Moodle site. It's from the movie The Labyrinth, which I don't know if you've ever seen. Um, I think rather than explaining it, maybe I'll just leave it open. Um, 
it's a really hard one to write in words how you did this. So again, I'll just show you that I gave it a shot, right? Um, and uh, do watch the video. I think it's, it's kind of an interesting one. Um, yeah, so that gives us a, a shot on those. The last ones here, as we go through this logic and reasoning, um, again, are, are ones that you can do on your phone. So these kind of like um, grid based ones, they always have a backstory to them. And so this one is, is in our notes for us to give a try to. So um, it's about an art thief. <laughs> and basically what it's about is there are four works of art done in four different years and they have each have um, a different artist, right? So they have a name, a date, and an artist. And so you're given these clues. And from these clues, what you're supposed to do is fill out this box down below. And so it takes some thinking. I've tried to make notes, right? And I would suggest if this is not your, if this is your cup of tea, then go ahead and just do it, right? Um, I know I gave it to a colleague and she finished it ridiculously quickly. I struggle over these so much that you can see my little notes here trying to explain how I got to the logic. And I've also in the um, key of the notes here, I actually wrote it out with more detail, right? Kind of figuring out this is my line of logic. Um, so you can kind of follow that along to complete that logic puzzle. Um, it takes some time for me. <laughs> this is not my forte, but it's interesting and it really like, yeah, it kind of hurts my brain, honestly. But um, a lot of people think they're fun. The last one, we're back into my comfort zone here where it says, without lifting your pencil, can you connect all the dots with four straight lines? If you want to, pause the video, give it a shot. Maybe you've already seen this somewhere. There's my one, my two, my three, and four. That would be the solution for this last one. Those kind of things are all over the internet, um, so give that a shot as you will. The last um, video that's in this section, I'll go through all of the puzzles that are at the back part of this, um, the, the papers that you got. I will also direct your attention to this glossary where I've tried to put all of the words, all of the lingo that I've been forcing myself to use um, as we talk through this unit, because these are the words you might want to try and use as you go through writing about how you solve the puzzles that come at the end of this unit.